again, when we're present, that feels good. And I believe we're here to feel good. So why not do that? So that's one thing that I find that we can do when we're experiencing any sort of failure. A lot of times we, we might, um, I find that people are generally in one of three areas when I am speaking on stage or coaching people. They're, they're either like, they all might believe that anything's possible. Let's just say that. I know there's a subset of people that maybe don't believe anything's possible. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the people that listen to this podcast are people that even though they might be in a tough spot right now, they believe anything's possible, right? Yeah. But you're probably in one of three areas. You either don't know what you want, right? Or you don't know how to get it. You know what you want, but you don't know how to get it. That's number two. And then number three is the one that really tugs at my heartstrings because I've been in all three of these and I've definitely been in this third place is you know what you want. You even know how to get it. You believe anything's possible for anyone, but you don't quite believe it's possible for you for whatever mm -hmm. reason, right? So when we find ourselves in any one of these three places, uh, a lot of times we can experience some level of confusion. And really that's just kind of a made up thing that our brain does. It's not usually generally true, but one way to, uh, to get around that confusion and to break through that is to meditate. Meditation quiets our mind. If we think about uh, just kind of a visual, quieting your mind, letting the dust settle. So that's number one black sheep habit. Number two black sheep habit is we can go out and we can contemplate, right? Contemplate. Literally, it's kind of like taking a walk in nature because when I'm, when I'm doing a walk in nature, I'm also contemplating. But let's just say I go to the park. I take my shoes off. This is also a good thing to do. I don't want to get all hippy dippy on y'all out there. I know I live in Southern California right now, but uh, when you have that foot, that your actual body touching the earth, you actually have what's called a negative ion exchange and it actually gives you life, right? So just try it, just try it sometime. So if you go out and do that and you're contemplating, you're kind of like doing a moving meditation where you're allowing thoughts to come in. Maybe you have an intention for that walk or what you want to think about and you just kind of release everything else. So it's very, very similar to meditation, but you're not sitting in a dark room with your eyes closed. You're actually chilling at the, at the beach or somewhere that's beautiful. I find that nature really does help. Yeah. Okay. No, what you're going to find is uh, all of a sudden things start to bubble up inside of your contemplation, almost like a seed or a sprout kind of coming through the ground. So you're going to notice that happening, especially when you've, when you've meditated, maybe first, maybe you do these back to back meditate and then go out and contemplate allow those thoughts to emerge and then you come home and number three is you want to journal right mm -hmm. it sounds goofy to some people like i don't want to journal right but journal write things down because our brain our limiting beliefs right there's something we don't way beyond the scope of this conversation but there's part of our brain that doesn't want us to be clear to be happy, to be fulfilled, to live our fullest life, right? There's this fear mechanism built into us that doesn't allow us sometimes to experience that or mis misidentifies opportunity as danger and it doesn't allow us to move forward with things and it stops us, it limits us. Again, beyond the scope perhaps of this conversation. So we wanna write these things down because these thoughts are slippery.